Welcome to the Heal Podcast. I'm Kelly Noonan Gores, and every week I speak to the leading doctors, healers, spiritual teachers, and scientists to find out what is truly possible when it comes to healing. I also interview real people with extraordinary healing stories. My philosophy is what's possible for one is possible for all. Hey everyone, welcome to the Heal Podcast. On today's episode, it is me, Kelly Noonan Goris, giving a solo episode. It's long overdue. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, I'm here today to talk about two big events that have happened in the last year, one of them very recent and one of them last fall. The first thing I'm going to talk about is my explant surgery. Um, and then I'm going to go into talking about the advanced week-long meditation retreat that I just went on with Dr. Joe Dispenza himself. I'm sure all of you are familiar with his work. He's one of the esteemed experts in HEAL, um, and his work has just gotten so much more exponentially powerful over the last few years. Um, and I'm so excited to talk about my experience over that week and also the research um, and the data that he's collecting on his work that is just nothing short of kind of miraculous and extraordinary and supernatural. Um, but it just, it really proves uh, where science meets the mystical and what is possible when it comes to healing and just co-creating a magnificent life, um, which we are here to do. So let's dive into the explant surgery. First, I wanna give a, a huge shout out to my friend Danica Patrick for being kind of the first to inspire me to, or lit a fire under my arse uh, to get my implants out. I first decided to get implants um, in 2010. All my life I had been an athlete and I have kind of broader shoulders and people, you know, it wasn't a, critique, but they were like, you know, oh, you have such broad shoulders. Are you a swimmer? I was always kind of like self-conscious about how muscular my arms were and broad my shoulders were and how strong my back was. So I just felt uh, a little self-conscious around it, consciousness around it, and wanted to get a little just more shape in my breast area um, for confidence. And I was an actress, and so I just felt like I was really proportioned everywhere except for my chest. Um, so I, I did not want to get big boobs. I'm a blonde, I'm an actress. I was really concerned about, you know, kind of falling into that bimbo category. Sorry if that's derogatory. But um, so I told my, when, when I found my surgeon, I said, I really just want shape. Um, I had kind of a full B, but the, the shape I wasn't happy with. And I wanted just proportion to my shoulders and, and arms and body. So um, I ended up choosing to get silicone because even though I, I had you know heard murmurings that they were not as safe as saline, if they leaked, silicone could be, to silicone could be toxic in, in your body. Um, I just wanted them to feel real and, and softer. So I, I went with silicone and I just said, you know, I'll just monitor and make sure they don't leak. And if they leak, I'll take them out ASAP and hopefully heal. So. Um, that was my decision behind the silicone. I got them half under the breast, half, I mean, half under the muscle. It's kind of like the pear shape, I guess, half under the muscle, half over the muscle. So when I, I, when I got them done, I was really happy with them. The surgeon kept telling me um, that I was going to want to go bigger. And I don't know the exact CCs that I got, but it was in the low 200s. Um, he said, you're going to want more. And I said, I absolutely are not going to want more. I'm not going to want more. I just want shape. And I'm really concerned that if I get bigger, I'm going to be typecast into one type. Um, and it's, it's not one that I want to be in uh, because I'm an actor. So I was very happy with them. They were very natural. I remember when I was healing, they told you to like, you know, push them up for a minute, down for a minute, right to the, for a minute and left, for, like however many times or, or like three times up and down, up and down, right and left. And I did like, 20 times the amount. I, and even though it was a little painful, I was just like, I, I'm, I do not want these babies to um, harden or encapsulate and, and I want them to be soft and natural. And it paid off. Um, I felt that my you know, job was really natural and, and people wouldn't know. Even by touching, they wouldn't know that I had implants in. So it was a really good job, well done. Um, and I'd kind of heard that there was like a life 
span of 10 years. Like you should get them changed out every 10 years. But I was like, oh, 10 years, that's so far down the line. Well, here I am 2022 last year and I'm like, oh, it's 12 years. And Danica starts talking about um, her experience and, and her healing journey and how she was like, started to learn about breast implant illness, BII. And even though I didn't have any symptoms, I was like, yeah, you know, they're not feeling right anymore. When I laid down, one, this, the right one was kind of hardened. Um, I was able to breastfeed. That was my biggest concern when I got implants was that I wouldn't be able to breastfeed. Thank God I was. But after the pregnancy and how enlarged everything got in my body, um, I noticed that the right one wasn't ever the same. And so, you know, my daughter's now was now like three and a half. And I was like, yeah, it's, it hasn't quite been the same since I breastfed. So for about two and a half years, it was a little wonky. Um, so I went to get a breast ultrasound because I was long overdue. And I, I go to this Sonocene clinic in Santa Monica, which is this really high tech ultrasound that can detect really early stage cancers and everything. Um, and I got an ultrasound and she said, I think the right one has ruptured. I see some ruptures. Um, but let me get the pathology back and, or the analysis from the, um, radiologist and then we'll go from there. So, um, she got it back. She said, it is ruptured. I think you should consider taking them out. And at the same time I heard Danica Patrick's story and I was like, okay, great. So I found a surgeon. Um, it was just one of those, I, I'm the type, I'm an Aries. I dive right in. So I didn't even research many people. I just had like serendipitously been connected to this guy in New York. His office was two blocks away from my um, my apartment there. And uh, his name is Dr. Ryan Neinstein. And I loved his energy. I, I vibed with him right away. He got me in right away. And I was just like, I'm going with it. I'm going with the flow. There's a reason that I ran into the surgeon like a week after um, I made the decision to get them out. Anyways, long story short, um, made the surgery and I, I was feeling a little anxiety leading up to the surgery and I had this wonderful osteopath in New York and she came to work on me to like get my nervous system back in my body and calm me down and get me prepared for surgery the following day. And she was there in the morning and she said, you know, have you heard of this book, Prepare for Surgery and Heal Faster? I think it's by some woman named Peggy. So I Google it. She said, they, this woman gives you five simple things, but um, I have other clients that have prepared for surgery via these guidelines and have had like amazing recoveries, like faster than normal or what, you know, always surprise their doctors. And I said, great. So I downloaded the book. I like skimmed it. I got the cliff notes. Um, but I want to share that with you because anyone planning on surgery, I really, really, really highly recommend. It's very simple. It's an old book. The author's name is Peggy Huddleston, and it's called Prepare for Surgery, Heal Faster, and it absolutely worked for me. Um, it's one of the few things I did, but I healed so fast, and um, I wanna share with you um, kind of an overview of these five things, but anyone that is going into surgery should really um, get the book and, and figure this out, because I'm telling you, game changer. So she, step one is relax to feel peaceful, and she walks you through what you need to do to get in the zone of relaxation. Um, the second one is visualizing your healing. So you visualize, you know, the heal, the outcome of the res the operation. So you know, stage one, you visualize you're coming out. You feel minimal pain. Um, the doctor's like it was a success. You visualize that stage, and then you visualize, say, you're getting a hip replacement. You visualize, you know, within two, you know, a week, you're up walking around, and you're shocked at how great your hip is. So you're kind of visualizing the, the one, two, and three outcomes um, after your surgery and what the doctor's saying to you and how proud he, uh, she is of how well she did on the operation or whatever it is. But you're visualizing the outcome that you desire in, in a few different stages. So it's, it's multidimensional. Um, you organize a support group. It's really important that you know, you feel taken care of in your surgery. So two to three people remotely that can like check in on you, make you food, um, take care of you, whatever it is, just get a support group around you that is um, cheering for you and, 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 you know, helping you with whatever you need after and before the surgery. Um, and we all know from HEAL that, you know, community and support is tremendous for healing and like, 
improves outcomes by at least 50%. Step four is my favorite. It's these healing statements. And I was a little worried about how my doctor and anesthesiologist would um, receive this information. But um, basically, you give your anesthesiologist and surgeon um, these statements that they read to you during as you're going under general anesthesia. Um, so it's kind of like you're, you're almost in a programmable state and your subconscious mind is still taking in information, um, even though you're not conscious. So um, it's really like I printed out these healing statements. So basically like when you, and you talk to them in advance and make sure that they're okay with saying that, saying these things. But um, so like as you're going under, you, you know, the, the anesthesiologist is, um, or the surgeon, whichever you feel more comfortable, is, is saying, you know, you're gonna feel really comfortable, the surgery's gonna go really well, and you're gonna heal so fast. Whatever the statements are, you can read the book and, and figure out these three healing statements. If excessive bleeding is a, um, is part of is a risk or a part of the surgery you 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 have them repeat um, you will have minimal bleeding during the surgery so it's almost like the anesthesiologist is putting the general anesthesia in your veins and also like a, a really positive program into your subconscious as you're going under and then as uh, uh, towards the end of the surgery um, they repeat to you as you're you know still under and coming out your operation has gone very well I am pleased with, you know, whatever the outcome with the surgery. Um, and then they also tell you following this operation, you will be hungry for your favorite drink or light food, um, and you will be thirsty and urinate easily, which is, you know, to get your body back online after general anesthesia. It's telling you that all went well and, and your body will come back online um, very naturally and beautifully. Um, and so, you know, those, those are just some examples, but I got, I, I shared that with my surgeon and anesthesiologist and they kind of laughed, uh, but then, you know, printed it out, they taped it in the OR and they said them. And I'm telling you, it worked. Oh, so this is one thing that I thought was really telling. Uh, when I was preparing for surgery, I spoke to the surgeon uh, or the surgery coordinator and she was telling me everything to expect before, prepare, and then what to expect in the healing process. And I asked her a bunch of questions. And I said, can I travel like, you know, three days after because I was in New York and I wanted to go home. And she said, well, you know, most likely 99% of the time you're gonna have a drain in and they have to, because you're removing something that was in there that took up space and now there's probably gonna be blood that's pooling in there. Um, so you'll need a drain and then you can't take out the drain until five days later. So you're gonna be, you're gonna have to stay in New York for five days. And I said, well, what are the chances, you know, is there any chance that I won't have drains? Cause I don't know, that sounds really gross and not ideal to me. <laughs> so, and she's like, well, uh, there's a chance, but most likely you're gonna have drains. 99% of the people have drains. So I said, okay. So in my healing statements that I had the surgeon and anesthesiologist read during my surgery when I was under, um, one of them was, you know, there will be minimal bleeding and no need for drains. And I don't know if it was suggestion to the surgeon, but even with all of the cleaning out that he did of the right breast, encapsulation, etc., cetera, um, I woke up, no drains needed. So that was another reason I healed faster because I didn't have to deal with that. So I don't know, that to me was really telling that I defied the odds with that healing statement. And again, maybe I programmed uh, subconsciously into the surgeon and he was like, oh, don't, don't need drains. But regardless, the outcome was desirable and I healed much faster. So step five is, is really feeling empowered. So you wanna meet with your anesthesiologist or your surgeon beforehand and um, you know, just get off your chest any anxieties you have, ask them any questions, um, you know, talk about the healing statements, you know, and just, just feel empowered with information. What should you stop eating or drinking the night before? Go over the rules and the steps um, just so you feel comfortable and empowered and then get off your chest any anxieties or bad experiences that you've had so you can talk through it and they can feel like they're being really supportive um, and you can go into it confident. So, those are some of the steps, but um, prepare for surgery, heal faster. I healed so fast. Now I will mention this, uh, but, but like my doctor was 
like in, it was incredible how fast I healed. And so I really believe in this book. But I also have to say, I also had another secret weapon um, with me in the quantum. I have this woman who um, I've kept kind of close to my hip for a while because, you know, I don't know how people receive this, but she is an amazing um, energy healer and she works remotely. And I met her on Instagram, actually. Her name is Susan Burdick. She's in the Boston area. Um, and I just loved her energy and she reached out and we started talking and I actually tried her because a few you know, of my friends, like a friend got into an accident, a friend's niece got into an accident and she was having a, her second brain surgery. And she, this, um, Susan really works well with kids. So I, I called Susan, I said, hey, I'd love to try you out. My, my, this, this poor girl is going in for her second brain surgery after this traumatic car accident. Um, the first time there was all sorts of swelling. Um, you know, she was still, they were just not very hopeful that she was gonna come back um, and have a normal life. And so this was the second brain surgery. And so I talked to my friend whose niece it was, and he he's gave permission to have Susan work on her in the OR um, remotely. And so I hired Susan to work on her, and she like reported all these. It's, it's amazing what she does. But she was basically energetically um, in the quantum, in the room with this girl. And after the second surgery, um, there was no brain swelling. She started having motor, um, like the, the movements return, like it, the, the contrast from the first surgery to the second surgery was mind blowing and the doctors were shocked. And I was convinced that Susan's work and um, energy work remotely really made a difference. I, I then went on to try her in other surgeries for people. And now anytime a loved one or a friend has a surgery, um, I have her in the room working on them. And, and I'm telling you, um, I had her work on me during my explant surgery and she can like help calm the surgeon and the doctor um, and just make sure everything in the room is right. She's just amazing. So I'll, I'll put her information in the uh, show notes, but she's kind of my secret weapon too. And she was in there. So my explant surgery, you know, thank God, knock on wood, went beautifully. Um, I also got a lift, so, you know, had to do it, but full, full disclosure, I'm, I'm being honest here. Part of the, I think that the lift is really important because I got a lift, um, there's scars, there's vertical scars on my breasts, and maybe that's too much information, but I think it's important because every, all the healing that I've done over the past many years, but especially accelerated more recently in the last six months, has been about self-love and acceptance, right? I'm so ready to just like fully step into my authentic self and use my voice and not fear what people, um, judgment of people, you know? I'm just like so ready to shed that people pleaser skin and perfectionism and all of these illusions that we think we can be loved by everybody. It's just not the way life is designed, you know? Um, so in all the work I've done around self-love and authenticity, you know, having these little scars on my breasts, it's like, I haven't even, I actually like look at it as kind of like a, I don't know, a souvenir of, of the journey that I've been through to get me back to myself. And I'm, I'm so happy with the job that the surgeon did. Thank God. Thank you, Dr. Ryan. But you know, even with the scars, I just like love myself and every aspect of myself. Um, and we have, we all have emotional scars and just to learn and continue to embrace all aspects of ourselves and, and every, even the painful traumas that brought us and, and shaped us into who we are, you know, to start to come out of victimhood or critique or self punishment and, um, beating yourself up for not being perfect and just really embracing and loving. And, and I, just, I just know that the scars will fade over time. I can also do laser and other things, um, but it's a cool exercise in just really embracing all of me uh, and how God intended, even though I went on this little journey off the path and experienced that for 12 years of having implants and now just to get back to me, scars and all. So it's kind of a cool aspect of it. So now I have, like I feel, so a couple of things. I feel fantastic. My right one was not the same after breastfeeding because it had ruptured 
fully. And so my body, when I lied, when I laid down, like my left one kind of flopped over to the, to the normal, like a normal boob would. And my right one kind of just like s- stood there like a rock. And, and then when I was up, I couldn't feel anything weird or hard. So I just, I didn't know the extent that it had been encapsulated. But basically my body, this intelligent, beautiful, wonderful body that we have, um, encapsulated this ruptured toxic substance um, of silicone and completely encapsulated so that none leaked into my body. Now, maybe some did, but I, I didn't have any symptoms. He said, you know, he had to cut all the encapsulation off and really clean it out. And that was like what took the longest. Um, but he's, he cleaned it all out, fixed it all up. But he had this like video. The surgeon is playing with this just yellow goo. And I don't know if it's yellow because of the iodine or something, but it was gross. I mean, he posted it for Halloween because my surgery was near Halloween. And it was just this like ruptured silicone implant that was in my body probably for three years completely ruptured so thank you intelligent beautiful body for protecting me and thank god they're out of my body um i'm so happy i you know small boobs are trending (laughs) but also i just feel so much better in my skin um I do feel like I got a lot of mental clarity back. So even though, you know, perhaps my body encapsulated and I didn't really technically have breast implant illness, I still had foreign objects in my body. And, you know, I I really do feel ever since, you know, early November of 2022, my brain has just operated so much better than it has in 12 years. So, um, you know, no judgment either way. I have uh, like two very close friends that one just got implants because her whole life, you know, she's had kids and she's always been very small. She's like, she has none. Um, so like as long as people know the risks and know that they have a lifespan, so you're going to have to either remove them or get them replaced within 10 years um, and then pay attention to the signs of breast implant illness. Start to, you know, just be really in tune with your body if you decide to get implants. Um, and then if you have implants and they've been in for more than 10 years, I know people that have had them in for 20 years, like, please just remove them. Um, if you have mystery illness and symptoms that you're not quite sure of and you have implants, really, you know, consider getting an explant surgery and trying something else. And now, again, like, there's, you know, I, I have zero judgment on, on implants. I think that... There's ways and doctors who know how to do them more safely than others. And of course, if you have to get a mastectomy, double mastectomy um, because of breast cancer, you know, there's, and there's safer alternatives as well that don't require implants. But, um, you know, again, no judgment, just know the risks and that know that like you're going to have to change them out within 10 years and also pay attention to symptoms that come up because they can be caused and look up breast implant illness and know the risks um, before you commit. I, I really don't regret getting them and I'm, and I'm super thankful that I was healthy ish throughout. Um, and I, I can't tell you how good I feel having them out of my body. So I think that's about it. Um, you know, you can ask me questions once I post this, but, um, that, that was my story. That was my journey with boobs and then got my boobs, my normal boobs back and it feels fantastic feel much lighter and I feel like I could just like my chest like everything is just open I feel like I breathe better my just yeah so super happy there now moving on to what I'm really excited to talk about which is the advanced week-long meditation retreat with Joe Dispenza first of all I can't believe um, it's taken me so long to do one of these um, bless his heart he's been trying to get me to do a week long for you know since heal but um, I just dove in. I've been, since January of 2023, um, again, astrologically, like some moved into some house and I've just been like on this me, me, me healing, put myself first. I just really need to fill my tank, recharge my battery and do some deep healing. So I've done that parasite cleanse. Um, I did some fertility stuff. Like I've just really put my needs first and um, it's been a really beautiful and challenging six months um and this was kind of the culmination and like 
what locked in this new me. It's almost like I'm shedding skins and I'm, I'm uh, metamorphosizing, molting. I don't know what the analogy is, but this advanced week long, I kind of was looking at it like, oh, I'm going to go down and just like, it's going to be so great to sit with myself and do some deeper healing. I had no idea what I was in store for. Um, it is like, I want to say it's boot camp. I mean, it's boot camp of sitting with yourself and overcoming yourself to become the person you want to be. It is not airy fairy meditation. It is, there's like little to no time to sleep, socialize, you know, enjoy a meal. It is like serious work. And, um, but in the best way, I mean, in the most transformational way, but I just remember, um, after the first day, I was like, whoa, dude, there's five more days of this, you know, the first full day. So I would, I would um, describe it as like lectures and learning about neuroscience, quantum physics, manifestation, and energy healing. And then at this, like the, the same body and human and personality that you go in with is you're different. You're a completely different person and body at the end of the week. It was um, life changing. I don't even know where to start. Um, I feel like this is going to be very hard to put into words my experience, but it was intense. It was beautiful. It was transformational and it was super inspiring. Um, and the gist of it is like getting, you know, we only, it's a scientific fact. He has said that we only perceive 1% of reality. And he's designed meditations and this program to expand our awareness so that we can start to experience beyond this three-dimensional reality, which is really an illusion of separation. This is, it's kind of hard to share my experience because it was so profound. And I have so many personal experiences in the different meditations. But he has different meditations that activate and bring up different things like so there's like manifestation meditations where you're tuning into new potentials in the quantum and it's and I've been doing those types of meditations for a long time but then he's got these these you know talks which which deepens our meaning and understanding of why we do these meditations and then there's the blessing of the energy centers which is essentially putting your attention on all of the chakras and activating and and activating the energy there with breath and attention to move energy and like so many profound things happened with all these different types of meditations layered with the meaning and the deep understanding of why we're doing these meditations we moved so much energy um, and he taught us so like so deeply how the brain works and how heart and brain coherence works um, and how the and how getting beyond ourselves into the quantum field, into the void where there's no time, um, no body, no where. Uh, so we're getting beyond ourselves and into the void so that we can literally, our frequency, our coherence rises, our frequency rises, and we can reconnect with source. Like it was so clear to me that we're all just these little fractals of source. And one of the profound, realizations I had um, as we're connecting to source and having these divine experiences of really bliss and ecstasy and um, just immense gratitude and our hearts just like cracking open and, and healing and downloads um, of information. Um, you know, something that I just deeply realized is that, you know, as we are spiritual beings having a human experience like our souls decide we're going to come into this world into this life and you know from my understanding and kind of the communities I run it with it's like we've chosen to come into this life you know we've all chosen to come here at this time in history which is a very interesting time in history um, and we choose you know our lives to a certain extent and then we have to navigate them and kind of get back to remembering that we are all little fractals, little pieces of divinity. And then we all go back to source when we cross over back into the back and, you know, die 
and but we're eternal so we go back into that source which is you know what everyone's described in a near-death experience is just this like indescribable love and bliss and so in order to come into this physical 3d world we have to forget that we're divine we have to believe that we're separate as these little humans so um, what what I kind of became super aware of, um, and then we had these experiences to embody this awareness, is that we are pieces of divine divinity, and this illusion makes us think we're separate, but we are all one. And and Joe has de like designed these meditations where we get back into the oneness, and we get back into the void, and we get out of our bodies, we leave the three D, get into the five D, and these frequencies, and we. You know, the higher the frequencies beyond light, which is the three-dimensional um, realm, these higher frequencies that we become in alignment with is is reconnecting with source, and just it just downloads so much information and order into our bodies, and energy moves, and you know the field changes uh, with frequency and information, and you know as we know from, I think its name is Harold Saxonberg, this Yale researcher, and from Albert Einstein, we learned that the field is the sole governing agency of the, of the particle. It's the field that determines how matter is organized. So when we can get beyond ourselves and into the quantum through these meditations, we can download different information, raise the frequency in our field, and then our matter organizes in kind. So. I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I'm not doing it justice here. You have to go, but, but we learn and then we experience. Um, and, and I reconnected with source in so many moments and I just expanded so much. And then, and on also with his breath work and his, um, blessing of the energy centers and electric body and all these different types of meditations, like for instance, one time, you know, the, we go through the seven, eight chakras, the eighth chakra above our head and we're moving energy out of the three lower chakras um, and which a lot of you know our traumas are these base emotions are stuck and trapped in there and like one interest interesting thing that happened to me as we were doing that moving all this energy I was releasing energy from those lower chakras and what came to my awareness was this panic attack I had had when I was in high school um, I just graduated from high school I think and I was working at this Irish restaurant in Seal Beach O'Malley's and I was young and like you know put a lot of pressure on myself and I, 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 I couldn't handle the pressure of like waiting tables on a weekend breakfast like it was just like too much with the creamers and the, the breakfast orders and I was I just was overwhelmed because I it was I was new to this and it was new information and I and I was stressing I didn't realize it was just a waitressing job and I could just go with the flow so I was putting all this pressure on myself and I had to leave the restaurant and I had this full-blown panic attack and I'm not prone to panic attacks like that's maybe one of two or three I've had in my entire life and I couldn't breathe and I was just bawling and I could like couldn't catch my breath and I just thought the world was ending I mean it was irrational at the time but it was it was a real experience and I had to stay out there for you know almost 45 minutes to come back down to earth and catch my breath and like you know you can't leave tables for 45 minutes so other people had to help me and it was really embarrassing and it was a whole thing anyways I had no idea that that experience was still trapped in my body. But after this meditation where we moved all this energy out of our three lower chakras and up into our heart and brain, um, that came to my awareness as like had been trapped in my body. Like I had a legit panic attack trapped in my body. Well, that's like a lot of information and energy that's stuck and stagnant in your body. So what else is trapped in there? You know, and, and people with, you know, that's just one panic attack. People have real traumas that are trapped in their body. So that's just one tiny example of the profound um, shifts that I had during this week. So, um, you know, then he also has his walking meditations, which we do every day, which that's the funny thing. That's the one like kind of strange thing. There's 1,800 people on the beach at this resort and, <laughs> and we're like walking around with headphones on. Uh, and this is the little thing that's like awkward for me because it, it definitely looked like we were a bunch of zombies like walking on the beach or like, you know, some of us are smiling, some of us are like convulsing, some people are on the ground, some people are moaning, like it's just a funny scene. But it's also amazing because we are 
walking and moving our bodies as these future selves is he, that he's guiding us through, whether it's through breath work or guided meditations, these different walking meditations. But as we're walking as our future selves, it's, it's you're reprogramming the subconscious mind, which is your body. So he's got this whole program that it's like, it's like transformational boot camp, but the amount of release and the amount of joy and gratitude, happy tears, um, shifts, it's, it's really profound. Um, and it felt like the week of this work that we were doing and getting beyond ourselves through these meditations and the breath work and getting outside of this three-dimensional reality and into the blackness, into the void, into the unified field and connecting with source, I really felt like I was plugging in to source energy and getting kind of a recharge of like light frequency um, and life force energy. And that's how I felt. I felt expanded and energized. Um, we weren't sleeping that much and I just, like you just, we had so much energy and I'm carrying that still with me today. Um, but it's, it's, it's about, he, he calls it, it's about taming the animal side of us. We're like 50% animal and then 50% spiritual being animating this animal skin, right? And brain. So there's a lot of survival aspects and, and um, instincts we have as the animal part of us. And our brains tend to, you know, dwell in the past or get anxious about the future. And so it was about taming the animal, overcoming these habits that we have, and sitting in that seat or laying on that floor and going through the often uncomfortable lengths of these meditations, I was like, Joe, bro, like when is this going to be done? But coming back to knowing the outcome and knowing how blissful you feel at the end and just practicing keeping your butt in the seat and keep going through the motions of these um, sometimes challenging meditations, like they're just intense and they're long. and. So that's like getting us back into the present moment, which a lot of us have never been trained to do. So it was kind of that training. And the present moment, the powerful present moment, that's where every master has found enlightenment in the present moment. It's where we can co-create with life. Um, so taming the animal, consciously remaining present, and then getting beyond our senses and into the void to connect to the higher frequencies and source. It was like plugging into our energy source, the divine, reconnecting, feeling that wholeness and that organization and order and harmony and coherence. Um, and then the other part is like when you're plugged in, just downloads of information and wisdom from our higher self. So that was kind of the gist. If you want to experience that, highly recommend. Like, oh my gosh, I can't even, <laughs> I, I could talk for hours. The good news is Dr. Joe Dispenza is coming back on the podcast so I can like go deep into some of the personal experiences I had and then talk about some of his mystical personal experiences because that's what drives him. He's He designs these for himself, these meditations, and has had such profound mystical experiences that that's what drives him. And it just, you know, he's expanding his awareness so that we can really perceive more of reality and get beyond this limited um, three-dimensional reality of only, you know, one to four percent of perception that we have of reality. We want to expand what we're capable of and expand what, you know, the truth of our experiences. Um, let's see. So... Yeah, we, we changed so much um, during the week that there's a common thing, uh, there's a common after effect called the dispensa influenza because you're moving so much energy. You're, reca you're literally recalibrating your nervous system. You're moving so much energy. You're releasing so much trauma that sometimes you kind of have like a detox effect. Um, I was fine during the week. Some people felt it during the week. Some people were like, super tired because they were just like releasing so much energy. Um, I got home and about four days later, I felt like I got this weird stomach bug. Um, my intestines felt like they were just like in knots or like, you know, there was like aliens inside of me. It, it was the weirdest thing. I've never experienced anything like that. I didn't have any like head pain or, um, you know, f like head cold symptoms. I wasn't like draining anything it was just my body was in like felt like rocks in so much pain and in my intestines and it laid me out for two and a half days 
Um, and then I got an IV of fluids and alkalinity and a deep tissue massage, and I was like a new person. So I really feel that it was a recalibration and a reset um, of my body, and it had to set and it had to release, you know, some old patterns that were no longer aligned. And I think that happens sometimes when you do this intense transformational work and then go back into your old environment, right? There's a lot of, uh, you know, tension or triggering or, you know, whatever that is, pressure that needs to figure out how to kind of recalibrate and align in that environment. In talking about the Joe Dispenza influenza and what I experienced, I actually reached out to Joe and he responded so grace, graciously. Um, when the body cellular systems are processing a greater frequency, every cell moves more into the present moment and out of the past, from the known, the past, to the unknown, closer to pure love, which is our source vibration. Every cell releases its wastes and toxins and residues that are not consistent with a greater level of wholeness and order. The discharge causes a strong immune response. It's the transmutation of the flesh. So it's pretty cool. And the discomfort is the unknown, which that's why a lot of us are kind of addicted to the very uncomfortable known or familiar. Um, one beautiful thing that happened was I had, you know, Joe Dispenza talks about how when you do this work, when you get into these states of bliss and coherence, heart brain coherence, which is what we're doing with every meditation, when you get into those, you know, gamma rays and this, this state of bliss and overwhelming gratitude, like you're just in this state, even if you're like, feeling you know the, into the future like tuning into the new potentials which is one of the um, meditations he has that I love to do you know you feel so good you're feeling as if you have all the things that you're desiring you're feeling so good in the in the moment that it's actually like you forget about what you're desiring because the whole point is feeling as if and like we're going after a feeling we're not going after you know the new relationship or the um, new promotion or the car or whatever, we're going after the feeling of what we think will feel in our bodies, in our hearts when we, when we achieve that, when we receive that, when we're, you know, the empowerment we feel when we're driving that car or whatever, or the, the love that we feel when we're in that relationship, the, the, the freedom we feel when we get that promotion, whatever those feelings are, if we can feel them in the moment, which is what Joe's meditations allow and get us to, um, that end result doesn't matter. It's like we're feeling that every day in that practice. So that was awesome. And then in those feelings, once you feel that expanded, all you feel is connection, love for humanity, compassion, and forgiveness. Because as we go through this process, I was releasing so much guilt, shame, the path, like I got so much, the, the realization that so many people and myself had during different meditations was that like, and Peter Crone says this all the time, we'll shout out Peter, like it couldn't happen any other way because it didn't. So all the things leading up to that moment, good, bad, ugly, amazing, disastrous, traumatic, painful, everything happened exactly as it should to get to that moment. And everybody has, you know, shit, but everybody, does, everybody is divine. So to have this incredible practice, to have these incredible teachings, to know, to remember, it was a pathway to remembering my divinity, um, which allowed for just letting go of everything in the past, not carrying that past forward with us into the future and actually learning how to be a co-creator with the divine because we are little pieces of divinity. Um, and we are, we are pieces of divinity. We are the divine, we are source. Source is experiencing itself and life through us. So, you know, all, guilt and all of that stuff, mistakes, shame, trauma, pain, all of that stuff is all part of it. Um, but it's futile to take it with you or beat yourself up or hold on to it. It's like, no, we're all here. Once we remember our divinity, then we can really 
start to co-create with life and start to view others as little pieces of the divine, its source trying to experience itself through all of us and everybody is divine and you just have this compassion, this new lens of just compassion and, and, and an understanding that the people that have made mistakes or gone down the bad path or the, you know, the, the bad people, the hurt people that hurt people, they have just forgotten who they are. They've forgotten their divinity. And so I just, I think that's one of the overarching gifts from this advanced week long is that I remembered, I remembered my divinity. I, I reconnected with source many times throughout, albeit, you know, brief, but profound. And so to, to hold that and to have a practice that keeps me connected and remembering who I am um, is just so powerful. And, and we need more people to embody this and, and to know and to get to know and to reconnect with our source and to understand our divinity so that we can be more compassionate to the rest of humanity that is still in the process of remembering. And I just think it's so interesting. Like we have to forget in order to be separate and in these physical 3D world human bodies. But I'm just so grateful to Joe Dispenza because he's given me a pathway back to remembering my divinity. Um, I have come back and people, multiple people, they all say, I see it. Like I see a change. Um, and it's usually in my eyes. They're like, your eyes are so much brighter. Like there's something, something shifted. And, and it's not one, two, three. It's been like seven or eight people that have said, whoa, where'd you go? What'd you do? Like your eyes are like shining. And I just know that I just shed so much. I shed so much. I unburdened so much there. And then I also just like went into so much coherence that you just have so much more order in your body. Um, and of course, I remembered my divinity. So I think that's shining through my eyes. And I just, and now, like he said, the more that I practice this, the more that I embody this, the more that I can keep in that. Um, and of course, life's going to throw me off. It's going to smack me across the head at every level as we're spiraling upward and expanding. You know, we're going to get new challenges that... So, but I'm just grateful that I have this practice that will keep me um, on the path of remembering and give me access to that reconnection with source. Because the more of us that do this work, the more we can hold the compassion um, and forgiveness for everybody that's wronged us, you know, air quotes, in our life, um, and, and the people out in society that are lost and have forgotten their divinity. Um, so I think that was such a beautiful gift. Um, one of the side effects is you start to experience a lot of synchronicities, right? So in the 3D realm, you um, there's cause and effect, like something happens, we start to feel something, and it's an emotional outcome. But in the 5D um, or the quantum, we cause an effect. So we start to get beyond ourselves and, and, and send an intention and a visualization out with our brain. And then in brain and heart coherence, then we draw it back with the elevated emotion of gratitude, joy, relief, bliss, whatever those elevated emotions are. Um, and we create, we co-create with life. It's, we're causing an effect. So once we start to do that, Informate, we're, we're not only sending information out into the field, we're just calling it back to us. So aligned people and circumstances and events called synchronicities are going to show up in our life and they have been for the last few weeks in spades for me. Um, and Joe says, when our field and frequency is coherent with the belief about what we deserve and with what we desire. So it's when the field and the frequency is in coherence with what we desire, but then also our belief that we deserve it is in alignment as well. So we need to believe that we deserve what we desire as part of it. So yeah, so much more to share, and I'm gonna continue this conversation with Joe D in the flesh on this podcast, but that is just uh, my experience of the week long. I feel so grateful. I met some wonderful, wonderful people. I'm just going to give some shout outs for fun in case they listen to this. But Pooja, her sister and her mother from Kenya. So cool to meet them. Laura, Maggie, Steve, Florencia, my, my, my homie and her boyfriend Jack, Hatem. 
Zehar, Greg, Christine, Dominique, and, and so many more, Dominic. Um, but it was just it was just awesome to meet people from all over the world flying in to be a part of this new collective network of observers that is shifting the paradigm into more of a love-led, harmonious existence. The reason I feel very honored to have experienced this is because Joe taught me that a collective network of observers, this is a very quantum physics phenomenon, um, with brain and heart coherence, they determine reality. I mean, we know like the observer, the double slit theory, like the science, scientists' um, expectation or even just act of observing something changes the outcome of something. So when, you know, groups of us can get together and do this kind of work and open our hearts and release and do all this healing and energize ourselves and then, you know, feel those into those frequencies of bliss and love um, and service you know, he's literally creating these networks, these collective networks of coherence that will determine a new reality, a new paradigm. So it's really cool. And um, so many other people are doing amazing work on the planet that is, is doing their part of this. But it was definitely watching Joe and um, just kind of like the orchestra conductor of these groups of people and just plugging them back into their divinity, opening their hearts, and then shifting the field, the unified field around us is pretty cool to experience. Oh, I didn't even talk about the coherence healings. 1,800 people, we did three different coherence healings, and I didn't talk about the scientific research. He's doing scientific research that is proving all of these, you know, just the tremendous health benefits and miraculous effects of these meditations and this work that he does um, with, I think, the University of uh, California, San Diego. Um, you can learn about it more on his website, but the data is proving how effective this work is. It's, it's backing up the miracles, and, and, and they also do coherence healings remotely. It's just, it, it, I'm so excited to share this scientific research as it's rolling out, but it's, it's, it's proving the power of his work and it's proving um, what is possible when it comes to healing. And I just, I, I just can't explain it enough. Like we do these coherence healings where we all get in this state, the healers get in this state and then we go in and they, they picked, I think it was like almost 300, I wanna say, healies that would lie down in the middle of these groups of eight chairs and then the heal like us healers would get into this meditative state of coherence and then we'd all send intention to the 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 person uh, in our in our little cage in the in the group of eight but so as a result of this experience over and over layered upon layered upon layered throughout the whole week and then these coherence healings at the end of the week i mean miracles would occur we we were you know, creating these new fields, we were moving energy, we were releasing trauma. Um, and literally, Joe told us of many instances where tumors have just dissolved in front of people's eyes. Like they, they started at the beginning of the week, gone by the end of the week. People who were blind since birth or blind, like could see. All of a sudden, sight was restored because of the order, the organization, and the energy. Um, and the information on the higher frequency. And people, um, deaf people, got their hearing back. And then he's talked, he told us so many times, and then we witnessed at the end of the week people getting up out of their wheelchairs. Uh, because again, new information, new order in the body and the nervous system, which is our greatest pharmacist, um, was releasing all the chemicals and, and, and getting, you know, a lot more energy into the systems that wasn't there before, it was blocked. Um, so it was really miraculous. He's documenting all of this, but we even saw a story of ALS, which I think is just, you know, it's, it's Lou Gehrig's disease. It is, it's a very hopeless diagnosis. And um, he has witnessed people with ALS getting up out of wheelchairs on their own accord and reversing the degenerative process. So, you know, I love, a, I love a good miracle, but when you can study it and have the scientific research to back it up and show and demonstrate and understand why it's happening, pretty damn cool. So there is 
that, I encourage you guys all to check it out. Advanced week long, Dr. Joe Dispenza's meditation retreats. Um, what's the other thing that I was going to talk about? Oh, someone asked about my manifestation um, practice. And there was one thing I said a long time ago about um, how it affected my relationship and, and meeting my husband. So I'm just going to quickly share that story because I think it's a good one. Um, before I met, you know, before I got familiar with Dr. Joe Dispenza's uh, tuning into new potentials and the manifestation meditations, where you literally get into a coherent state and then you um, basically are in the coherent state, you're out in the void, you get beyond yourself, and then you're visualizing, intending this future outcome that you want as if you already had it. So you're seeing yourself in that scene, that future self scene, whatever that is, let's call it a new relationship, or say you want a child, you're visualizing yourself holding your baby, you're visualizing yourself pregnant, and then you combine that intention that you're sending into the field with the elevated emotion of how you feel during, um, as that future self. So with, you know, with holding that baby, the love, the gratitude, oh, the appreciation, or you know, holding your belly and that excitement and anticipation and gratitude. Um, you, you're feel, so it's combining the intention with the elevated emotion, which is how he healed his back, which you know that story in heal, um, and that's you know the tuning into new potentials um, meditation. So that's that's one way that I do manifestation. It's like feeling into the future that you desire through his meditation. The other way before that is through gratitude journaling. And so with my husband, I was dating him like 12 years ago. We've been like, we started dating 13 years ago actually. Um, but it was around 12 years ago and I was, and he was dating other people and you know, we were like friends and I was in love with him and blah, blah, blah. But I was writing in my journal as if like I was giving thanks. It's kind of like the meditation, but it's just through writing. So I was writing in my journal um, and giving thanks for what I wanted, desired, as if I already had it. So I'm like writing in my journal. It feels silly at first, but you just do it because it's a way to, you know, actively um, use the creative imagination part of your mind. Um, it's taking the reins of your mind rather than focusing on the worst case. You focus on the best case scenario every day and you give thanks for it. So I said, I'm so happy and grateful that I'm, you know, with the man. Uh, and, and so at this point, I was in love with my husband, but he was dating these other girls and I was devastated. So, but I wasn't going to be like, you know, wallowing in my sorrow. I was going to say, okay, what is the universe showing me? What is it about my husband now, my boyfriend or the guy? that guy that I was in love with at the time. What are the qualities about him that I love that's making me so attracted to him? And what are the qualities are, what qualities are, is he showing me that I don't love? Like he's not appreciating me, he's not adoring me, he's not respecting me, whatever these things were. And so I allowed that um, ex, you know, experience and contrast to, sh to paint the picture and get really clear and specific about everything that I want. So I took the best qualities that he had and then I took the qualities that he wasn't showing me and I picked the opposite of him. And so then I would write down, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm with a man who adores me, respects me, is trustworthy, is kind, is honest, loves adventure, is super intelligent, has a great sense of humor, um, loves a five-star hotel, but also likes to go camping and loves nature and the wilderness, whatever it was. I, I picked the best qualities that he had, he was showing me, and then the opposites of the qualities that I did not appreciate about him because we were not together and I was like, why are you dating these other girls? So again, the contrast in life gets us to know, like gets us specific about what we do want. And so I started just giving thanks every day about this list of this ideal guy and what happened was I was either going to attract this amazing, like a magnet person into my life that fit the majority of that list, or my now husband was going to rise up and step into that list. And that's what happened. So as I, because that's what was meant to happen. Um, 
but I truly believe like as you're just focusing on what you do want and giving thanks for it, that elevated emotion and really like spending time every day having fun with that. And it could be about a relationship, it could be about a job, it could be about, you know, a creative expression, a dream, whatever it is, but you just you spend every day like using your imagination and your and your heart in order to you know, just live in that future self and embody it that you want to experience. Um, and it's fun and it's a great way and clearly effective way to use your imagination and visualization. So um, that's kind of the story. I used my current situation to show me what I wanted, you know, based on the opposite of what I was experiencing that I didn't want. I got very specific and then every day I just gave thanks for it and felt into it and felt the gratitude for this like perfect you know wonderful guy that I wanted to be with and what happened was he rose up and became and stopped, stopped dating the other girls and he started adoring me and appreciating me and um, you know all the things that I had put on my list that he wasn't doing at the time so that's the story um, and it's a it's you know between Dr. Joe's meditations and his work and gratitude journaling those have been very powerful tools for for manifestation for me and um, I love sharing them and they're kind of fun. Feel silly at first but it's fun and I can assure you it has been very effective for me. So that's it guys. That's kind of the latest update with me. As far as the podcast, um, I'm just feeling into it. I want to have conversations that inspire me. There's some people that I've um, already committed to interviewing that I'm excited to interview over the next you know, few months. Um, but I really, you know, as my daughter is four and growing up, I, I don't want to do anything that feels like a burden or stressful. So thank you for being on this journey with us. Thank you for being patient as I figure out the podcast. And thank you for always listening and being excited for the next episode. I'm hoping to just keep going with these really interesting conversations and inspiring conversations to help serve our community and, and keep us going and keep us expanding our awareness. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. We kind of, I'm just going to throw this out there. I'm looking to receive a sponsor or two to help us um, sustain the podcast and, and, you know, bring in some abundance so that we can uh, keep improving the podcast. I, you know, I couldn't, it didn't feel right. It was a little bit of soul sucking, just doing the advertising um, in a way that most people do. So if, if, if there's anyone out there that knows of a sponsor or two that just wants to sponsor a season of The Heal Podcast, we are open to receiving those people and, and having a conversation. So I'm just lobbing that out there. Um, either way, no matter what, I'm, I'm still happy to do this, you know, not making money um, and serving the community because these are wonderful conversations to have and I love sharing with you guys and I just really love um, our community and what we're doing in the world. So again, love you, thank you, hope this was helpful and we'll see you soon. Thank you for listening to The Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gorris. Thank you so much and be well.